Today on PBR, we're pulling back the curtain and showing you all the secrets of how our show is made. Welcome everyone to Power Rainbows. I'm of course your host, Professor Pride, and today we're going to take a little tiny break from our normal content on this channel and the educational uh, episodes we do because I think we kind of deserve a little tiny break from our normal episodes because we've been trying to do three episodes every week, all June, all Pride Month long, and I'm super proud of the fact that we were able to do that this year. Um, but at the same time, after that was over, I kind of promised my team at least one week off from the normal. So uh, this week, we're taking it easy. Uh, the team has this entire week off. Uh, so today, I wanted to take you on, on a little tour of the studio here and our offices show you how we make every episode and pull back the curtain on some secrets of how the episodes are made so that way you can see how hard this show actually is to make because it's a lot harder than people assume it is. Um, so all of that in today's episode. So let's get started with this tour of the studio. And we're going to show you how much traffic goes by outside the studio that makes it hard to make. So one of the biggest secrets on the show is this backdrop back here. A lot of people ask if this is a green screen, which is actually a, a fair guess, but no, it is an actual backdrop. It is like 10 foot wide by like six or seven feet high, I think, or something like that. Um, it is made by Kate Backdrops. It is an amazing, amazing quality backdrop. Um, it's super, super soft. I love it. Um, but no, it's actually a huge rainbow flag basically behind me. Um, it is super high quality and a huge shout out and thank you to Kate Backdrops for making this for us. Um, it's made for the show. Um, so I think you might be able to get one of them if you want one of them yourself from Kate Backdrops. But um, we got it for the show. It's super, super awesome um, because no matter what I do in the studio, there's always this backdrop behind me and it's super high quality for the camera that we have. So um, also up here, you'll notice we have a Spectro, a Genere Spectro LED light, which uh, is six inches by a foot. It allows us to have that hair light behind my head. Because uh, as you'll notice down here, there's not much room between where I sit and the backdrop. Normally in a TV studio, there has to be six feet between the person on screen and the backdrop. We don't really have that here. So this hair light allows us to have that little bit of light on the back of my head, on my hair, to separate me from the backdrop a bit more. So this hair light actually fakes that distance a little bit better for us. It's just on a super clamp up here on this uh, backdrop stand. Then you'll notice the wire is up in the air for the studio here. But um, how we get our audio for the show is actually through this little microphone here. This is a Samson CO2 cardioid microphone, and it picks up all my audio. And uh, even if I have a guest on the show, it's just one microphone up here that picks everything up because it's a super high quality microphone. And I absolutely love it. I've been using it for so many years now. And it's just so great a quality. I cannot get rid of the thing. Um, this is just on a boom stand, on a super clamp in the ceiling. Everything that we have is pretty much tied to the ceiling somehow because we didn't want anything on the ground as much as possible so people don't trip in here, especially when we have guests on the show. But that picks up all of the audio for the show. Then you'll notice we have this table which was added this past year because We've had so many props on the show that I decided to add a table to the set for the show uh, so that way I didn't have to deal with holding things on a, a chair and stuff like that. It's just made it so much easier this year. Um, and it's black, which is in contrast to the rainbow. People have asked why we don't have a rainbow uh, cover for the table, and that's because if we had rainbow there, there would just be too much rainbow in the entire shot because I'm wearing a rainbow t-shirt and the backdrop is all rainbow. So we decided to add some contrast so you knew that this was a table instead of just more backdrop. Um, so it separates that a little bit better. Another well-kept secret on the show is beside this table all the time is this ATA road case, which is basically a road case that we use to transport equipment for lighting and sound jobs um, that you see at like musicians and band festivals and stuff like that. Um, but this case is actually used right now to uh, like store things on the side of our table when we're not using it. For instance, my hairbrush for right before I go on camera so I can fix my hair, my mouse, which actually controls my computer for the teleprompter that I'll talk about in just a moment 
uh, in this episode, but this basically is a way for us to keep things off the main table so you don't see them on camera. And it's just enough out of the way, but just enough for me to reach over and grab it when I need it. Then up here are the two main lights for the entire show that you see uh, lighting the scene the entire time of the episode. Uh, so this is a Generae Spectro LED light, uh, one foot by one foot this time, instead of the half a foot by one foot over there for the hair light. So these are a little bit bigger. This is our key light, which adds that little sparkle in my eye the entire episode. And then over there is the light to fill in the shadows from the other side of my face. But these two lights offer us all the light we could ever possibly need for the show. And they are super high quality. And the best part of all these lights being LED is it doesn't get hot in here at all for the show. So we can record in the middle of summer. This right here is our light stands, which are some of the only stands we use for the show anymore. But they are impact light stands, which have sandbags on them so they don't fall over and break all of our equipment. Um, but those are up here to light our entire scene. The next biggest question we get on the show all the time is, what do I actually look at the entire time an episode is being made? And this right here is what I'm looking at. Uh, it's a couple monitors. The first is our teleprompter, which shows us the script for the entire episode, and then a monitor below that so I can see what uh, the actual camera is recording to see the levels of the audio, all that kind of stuff, so I can monitor how the shot looks and how it sounds. Uh, so all of that is what I look at the entire time. As for what we actually record on, this back here is our Canon XA40 camera, which is brand new this year for the show. Um, special thanks to our members and donors for allowing us to get this because it helps so much on the show. Um, but we have a bunch of accessories on it now that we've added in the past couple months uh, since you've seen it being unboxed on the channel. Uh, but this camera allows us to record up to 4K resolution uh, for all of our shows. And the reason why we record 4K is because on the show, you'll notice rather than doing jump cuts between when I make mistakes on the show um, and to get to the best times I said that line in that paragraph, um, we actually push in a little bit on those cuts. And in order to do that, we need to record in 4K here in the camera so that way when we punch in, we're not losing any quality in post-production. So the entire show is recorded in 4K here on multiple SD cards, so that way in case one of these SD cards fails, um, we always have an immediate backup on the second SD card uh, while we're editing. This camera also allows us for the first time ever to record uh, internal audio because we can plug our uh, XLR microphone, which is the Samson CO2 microphone, directly into this camcorder uh, through this top handle here. And that way we don't need to synchronize any footage later on between an audio recorder and the camera. It's all in one SD card, all in the camera now. So that saves us so much time in post-production rather than synchronizing footage later, unless we're using multiple cameras, of course. But it makes it so much easier on a weekly basis making this show because of that. Um, we also have a zoom controller and a recorder here uh, to control what the camera actually does. And then... Uh, some accessories here to just uh, tie on our teleprompter and have some accessories uh, for other episodes that are a little bit bigger. But we also have a giant battery on this now uh, that allows us to, just in case the AC in the building goes down or something like that, this has an extra battery on it so it can last for a while after that power goes out so we don't lose any footage. The entire camera rig that the camera is on is from a company called Newer. It's a really high quality rig that I love using. We have a couple of these for all of our cameras and it just allows such high quality to just grab and go our camera wherever we need to go that day. Uh, that entire thing is actually sitting on a Magnus VT3000 tripod uh, here and it's super high quality tripod with a fluid head. So no matter how we move our camera, it has really nice easy movements on a fluid head there and allows us to level our camera perfectly for every episode. So next you're probably wondering what this contraption on the front of the camera is, uh, because you might be wondering how you actually see every episode. Uh, well, this is our teleprompter. So this is how the script of every episode gets programmed through our uh, computer. And this is actually what I read the entire time of a show. Um, so this is actually just like homemade from like a bunch of styrofoam from like Walmart or something. 
um, and hot glue made this up with a picture frame in here. Uh, <laughs> it's really, really like a uh, frugal filmmaker kind of made, but it works incredibly well and it's a whole lot less expensive than a couple thousand dollars for one of these professionally. This cost $10. Uh, so <laughs> it's a little bit uh, nicer of a price point there for us. So at this point, you might be wondering how this all works. And the truth is it works from the optimization of an optical illusion. Uh, so basically what happens here is this is a little computer screen down here that's mounted to a tripod uh, below it. But this projects the script in reverse order. And then that gets projected upwards. And because there's a picture frame here, as you can tell, with a little piece of glass on a 45 degree angle, exactly 45 degrees. Um, it actually allows me to read off the script here, but the camera behind it shooting through that glass doesn't see the script at all. So the camera doesn't think this glass is here at all, but I read that script off of the back black uh, of the uh, styrofoam there. So that's how all of our scripts are read off and allows me to actually uh, sound like I know what I'm talking about because it's all a scripted show. Um, and that way I'm not off the cuff anymore, which helps way more than you know. Uh, but all of that is through this computer screen and this little uh, teleprompter we made. Then below that is our uh, camera monitor. Hi, everyone. You can finally see me. Uh, this is the Field Vision El Elvid uh, 4K camera monitor. This connects through HDMI to our camera behind that teleprompter, so I can actually see what the camera is seeing at all times, allows me to monitor our audio and check if I'm in focus or not, and check to make sure I look good on camera the entire time. Uh, this greatly helps in certain scenes when I don't want to look sarcastic or I don't want to look too happy in that moment because we're talking about something serious. This allows me to see what I'm actually look, looking like to the camera long before I ever go up and edit that footage in this uh, the editing bay. So that monitor greatly helps us so many times. Then you might be wondering about what other equipment we have, and there's truly a lot of it. Um, so over here is our laptop that controls our teleprompter system, and that is on this rolling cart of a toolbox, which has a bunch of tools, a bunch of... Uh, camera rig parts, bunch of gaff tape and other accessories for our cameras, a uh, bunch of uh, HDMI, USB, VGA cables, a bunch of DMX cables for our lighting equipment, a whole bunch of cables there. Over here, some road cases of audio equipment, a box for our teleprompter so we can uh, take it on the road when we need to, um, which by the way, the road case there costs like three, four hundred dollars compared to the actual teleprompter, which is like ten dollars. It's weird. Next up up here are the two Pelican cases that house all of the cameras for the show. Uh, if you're not aware, the cameras are not just for the, the show Power of Rainbows. They are actually owned by my company, which is Madhausen Productions, which we do a bunch of like corporate commercials, government agency stuff. We do a whole bunch of like uh, musicals, event videos, we do graduations, we do all that kind of stuff with our cameras. So a whole lot more reason why we have so many cameras here. But on bigger events like Pride events, we take both these cases with us and we're using up to 10 full HD cameras to record those bigger events. So all of that later on this summer, these are the cases that we're going to be using. So we have uh, the case for our XA40 over here. We have uh, two Canon T5i DSLRs. We have a bunch of GoPro Hero 5s and Hero 3s. We have a couple audio recorders for special things. We have a bunch of extra SD cards, batteries, all that kind of stuff, all in these road cases. They're all ready to go at all times. Over here, we have a battery charger case for all of the batteries for over here. They're all charged right over here in this little convenient case that we built just for that purpose. Then <laughs> over here on this wall, we have a bunch of like accessories and parts to make different things, a mixer for some reason for our audio mixing, um, just a ton of dif different parts, clamps, um, cases for lights. We have a bunch of dollies and spotlights down there. So this, this is like where things are thrown when we don't necessarily know what to do with them. Um, but it, it's <laughs> it, it basically no one else besides me kind of knows where everything is, but 
I know where things are. Um, so that's good enough. We have clapboards for the show so we can synchronize footage if we're using multiple cameras that day. And we just got done recording our Everyone is Awesome uh, Lego Pride set video. So that was just filmed like yesterday. Uh, so that, that is coming to you guys soon. Probably already up by the time this is out. But uh, another road case full of sound equipment. Then our closet back here is filled with mega heavy light stands. Uh, camera dollies, our camera crane, all bunch of equipment in here. Just It literally goes back to like way back there underneath the stair steps. But uh, all of this equipment uh, helps us make huge events possible uh, and lift our cameras or lights really high into the air if we ever need to. Uh, and there's a lot of times for our company that we need to do that. So that whole uh, closet is just filled with a whole bunch of stuff. Next up down here, we have uh, the banners and stuff like that for uh, what we do for like PA quality project. We have a whole bunch of banners for like MHP TV and our company, uh, filming in progress kind of signs, a bunch of clamps to like clamp things down whenever we need to. On these shelves, we have a bunch more equipment. Um, this is like our mic case, our laptop case, a uh, whole bunch of accessories and GoPros adapters, audio adapters, just a ton of stuff in these two cases that just keeps it more organized. We have our merchandise for the show. A shout out first Christmas. Go get it now on Amazon. Um, but this is where we keep some merchandise for the show uh, just for when we need to quickly grab it to make a little cameo in the video. Um, we have a bunch of other accessories up here. Um, we have cases for our quarter inch and our XLR cable. We just have miles of cable uh, around the studio for anything we might need. Safety cables to make sure that things are safely secured up in the air so it doesn't fall on anyone. That's always good to have. Um, our electrical stingers, electrical cables in other words, the film term for it by the way is stinger. So we say stingers around set. Um, a bunch more road cases down there with a bunch more equipment. And then over here we have a chair to just I don't know why it's here, but it's here so we can relax. <laughs> um, then over here we have a little cart with all of our light stands, uh, mic stands, our tripods, all that kind of stuff. All, all of that's on one little cart over here. We didn't paint it yet, but it's just a really nice cart to just roll around wherever we need to. And we just have all the stands we can ever imagine and we can just pick something up if we need it. So generally what happens is when we're building the set for the show, which Surprisingly, the entire set for the show gets set down a whole lot more often than you might assume. Uh, in the past month alone, this entire studio was set down, I think, five or six times and rebuilt while Pride Month was also happening because we had so many events on the road, like graduations and musicals. So this gets set down far more often than you might assume, which is why all of our tripods and stands have these little uh, markers on the floor of where exactly things go and measurements of how high every stand goes in the air so that way we can always build it the same exact way every week. Um, so when we're building that set we generally bring this cart over and that way we have all the light stands and all the stands we might need to build that out right at our fingertips. Then over here is just a wall of cases. It's just where the extra cases go that we don't use too, too often on the show. So you're gonna see a bunch of like guitar cases and piano case here, uh, another road case for some audio equipment, uh, battery cases, a uh, whole bunch of lighting cases back there, as you can probably tell. In those cases are a bunch of like moving head spotlights that cost thousands of dollars that we hardly ever use. Um, <laughs> and uh, a whole bunch of LED lights that are uh, for up lighting or stage lighting, like 10 par can lights that are all, all LED so we can make all different colors there. Um, lighting controllers and uh, all of our lighting equipment for gels and stuff like that, all in the cases up there. Then here we have our cases for our other backdrops on the show that we don't use every single day, like our black or white or green screen or some of that. All of that's in there. Um, our box full of music for some reason for sheet music original songs and cover songs I don't know why that's in there um don't mind that uh our piano which for some reason is out of its piano case I don't know why that's out of it anyway um don't just don't pay attention to anything anyway uh here's our job box for like extra smaller jobs we do we can just throw things in here rather than taking a giant case full of cables 
Um, we have a music stand with, of course, some pride on it, because uh, that's what I look, I like looking at when I'm reading music or something like that. Um, here is our giant case for our Mackie Onx 24x4 mixer, which is for huge audio productions when we're trying to uh, like do audio for a concert or a band. Uh, that's our mixer of choice to do that with. Then we have some speakers, which actually serve as wedges for when we're trying to be in the studio and play some music on our own for the show. Um, we actually use these custom, uh, what are they, 10 inch uh, speakers, but these are for on the road use and also just wedges for in the studio here so we can monitor our audio. Next up, I wanna show you where the actual show is scripted and edited from. So that happens in this editing bay right here, which we are actually two floors upstairs from the original studio you saw a little while ago there. Um, so up here is basically like a normal office. We have printer and the normal computer, but we have a whole lot more than that in here. Uh, so we have an audio mixer, which connects to a microphone that connects to the computer. And that way we can uh, do voiceover work for the, the show. We can do live streams through that microphone, which is a lot better quality. All that kind of stuff is through this mixer down here. Um, that mixer is a Yamaha 16 by four, uh, MG one, six, six something. Um, anyway, uh, this microphone is this, uh, Shure SM58 microphone with a windscreen on it. Then up here, we have another mixer and you might be wondering why we have another mixer. This is a Behringer X touch compact, which allows us to mix all of our audio live. So for bigger events, this allows me to actually have my hands on and mix like a real mixer would be, but all in post-production here. So this is controlling what's happening in the editing program there. Next up, we have our keyboard and mouse, which of course is doing a rainbow pattern on it because you know, gay. Uh, and then uh, <laughs> over here's our office phone for customers to call us or a potential uh, boyfriend to call me, you know, cause call me. Uh, anyway, uh, up here we have some accessories uh, for my desk. So there's an anchor cell phone charger for my cell phone here that I'm using. Um, then a little a pad for uh, my drinks to sit on, which of course has a paw print and rainbow because I'm a furry and I love me some furry and puppy merchandise there. So I love that. Um, then our Everyone is Awesome Lego Pride set, which actually we started incorporating into our uh, SD card reader. So this is actually how we import footage for the show. Uh, right inside of here, now it's connected through that Lego Pride set into the computer. Uh, our SD card, uh, all the SD cards for the show, um, DVD record, or, uh, writer, DVD reader, <laughs> and VHS reader, uh, queer as fuck, little, uh, 3D printed thing from my good friend Mike, uh, that printed it for me for the show, really cool. Um, then our three monitors up here for the show. We use an iMac Apple computer. Uh, it's 5K there, and then we have full HD monitor here and there. This one's mostly for our source footage and all of our footage for the show, and middle one's for editing and where we actually get to see what we're doing, uh, and then our effects, our effect controls, our graphics, and then over here finally is what you guys see out in the world. So this is a program monitor. This is what basically all of this this footage goes from here and to here gets edited and then goes to our program, which is what you eventually see online. So that is pretty much how our show is edited. If you're wondering what we actually have on our computer monitors the rest of the time, uh, this is my desktops for all, all three of them. So in the middle is our rainbow trans pride flag, uh, non-binary and bisexual. A blooper bar so that's what I love putting up in my middle screen because I like seeing rainbows in front of me and then over here is some awesome uh, pictures and designs by furry artists uh, we change them out routinely because I love seeing different art there by different furry artists um, but it just cuddles and a nice little date of two puppies so I love seeing that kind of stuff on my desktop and that really cheers me up when I'm feeling down or when I'm feeling like hey, I don't really want to create content today or something like that, I look at those pictures and it cheers me up a whole bunch. Over here is a slot for our headphones to sit on so I can edit 
in the middle of the night if I have to, um, which are Sennheiser uh, HD 280 Pro headphones. Really good quality there. That allows me to get uh, monitor my audio during live events and also monitor my audio when I'm editing over night sessions and I can't be too loud in here. Uh, of course, a rainbow flag because well, why not? Then up here, we have all of our hard drives for the show, 60 terabyte RAID system, so we can keep a ton of footage on our server all at one time. All of these are connected to the computer down here, uh, but they all have a master and slave, so that way they can copy the footage here internally. Just in case one of those fails, we have a backup of it here, as well as an online server backup of all of that as well. So just in case all of that fails, we have an online backup somewhere else too. Uh, a light so we can be in the in the middle of the night here, um, all of our, you know, paperwork um, <laughs> up there. And then over here, of course, a rainbow flag in the window because we want to show off our pride. Uh, a little whiteboard so we can keep track of different projects. Then down here we have a whole bunch of extra stuff, copies of the book that I keep just to sign, to send out to different people. Uh, I always keep a couple copies in the office here. Um, some flash drives for some customer projects that we're doing. Uh, books that I read when it's downtime from the show and I have nothing else better to do or I'm waiting for something to render or something like that, I can always read my book. And then back here is air conditioner so I can keep cool. Of course, a puppy calendar for next year. Um, and then a bunch of more office stuff, just, you know, a ton of stuff. I know it's, it's a lot. And then our wonderful internet server, all of the footage here that you're seeing goes through this router and this switch right here. So just everything goes through right there. So hopefully neither of those two things fail. Now, since the last time we did one of these behind the scenes videos, uh, we started working with a whole bunch of writers and producers from around the world now. So we're incredibly lucky to have a giant team now that helps us make this show. But you might be asking, how do we communicate with one another on a daily basis? How do we keep track of all of our episodes? How do we write our episodes? Well, all of that is done through Google now. So uh, we created a separate Google account just for this purpose, just for team members. So uh, it, it won't affect our PBR channel at all. The two are not connected in, in any way uh, because we didn't want one to get hacked and then the other one is compromised automatically. So they're completely separate. Uh, this way, our entire team can communicate without any worry of the channel being affected. But we keep track of everything through this little schedule here in a spreadsheet. Uh, it's quite simple when you look at it. Uh, but because we're working on probably four to five episodes at a time, uh, most of the time, right now we're only working on one or two, uh, which is really lucky for us because we're slowing down after June is over. Uh, but uh, for generally speaking, we're working on multiple episodes at one time and uh, team members are constantly working on different things. So we need to keep track of that. And that's all in this spreadsheet. So we have the, the number of the episode on the entire channel itself, the number of that video once it is uploaded to our channel. So uh, for instance, right now we're working on the behind the scenes, which is episode 382 on the channel that you'll see. Um, then we have the number for the season of the show. So we're in season four and this will be episode 102 for the season. Uh, so we're quite a few episodes into the season already. We have the topic that we're going to cover, which is generally the uh, title of the video or the working title of the video that we might change right before we upload it. But generally speaking, we come up with a really great title to begin with, uh, or at least have a working title of what that topic is going to be. We have when it's planned to air and go out to the world. We have any sort of special events uh, that are going on that week or that month or that day specifically. So uh, we know what that sh uh, episode has to align with. Uh, generally speaking, we try to, uh, for instance, the vigil for the 49 has to happen on Pulse Night of Remembrance. It has to happen that day. It can't be a day later or a sooner. Uh, so the holiday that's happening that day is all in this uh, different column here. We have the writer for the episode in this column over here. Generally speaking, I write most of the episodes, um, but there are a lot of times when a different writer will be working on that and their name will be here so that everyone knows what everyone else is working on at all times. The next column over here is for uh, how far the progress of that episode has been completed. So an O here means that's not even started at all. 
W means it's being worked on at the moment. X means it's completed and uh, we don't have to worry about that anymore. So all of the episodes that already aired are all in X up here. Uh, but for things we're working on right now, uh, we just got completed uh, working on filming that episode. So we're going to put an X in both of those and we're working on the next step. So uh, these columns are for scripted, whether the episode is scripted out by the writer uh, and completed there and ready to be filmed, whether the episode has been filmed in the studio or wherever it's being filmed at, uh, whether the episode has a rough draft of the audio edit. Um, so we go through and edit out all of the bloopers, edit out all of the bad parts, uh, and keep it to just the best times I said each and every paragraph in the episode, whether that step has been done and a rough draft of that episode is completed so we know how long that episode will be in, in its entirety. Then we go through the edit once more and edit all the video stuff on. So any graphics, any kind of uh, a stock footage or uh, different additional footage that we have to show on screen, anything video-wise we have to add uh, to that entire episode then it gets edited in in this next step and whether that's completed or not. Then we create the thumbnail for the episode. We export the episode out of our editing program, which is Premiere Pro, and uh, then we upload it to YouTube. And only when it is an X over here means it's uploaded to YouTube, all ready to go and scheduled for you guys to see out there online. Then uh, we put in here how many hours, minutes, and seconds each and every episode was. That way we can keep track of how many hours of broadcast we've put out uh, so far every year. And as you can tell, we put out 56 hours uh, of content this year so far and 203 hours of content overall in our show's history. So all of this math at the end here keeps track of all of that. Then on the bottom here, you might notice we have additional uh, little sheets for different things like season three was uh, all of season three is here and that way we can reference back to this at any time we need to. Um, we have all of the LGBTQ holidays that happen throughout the year so we can keep track of what's happening at every moment of the year because uh, there are 259 holidays to keep track of so it's a lot. Uh, so sometimes team members need to access this file and see what's happening on a certain day or uh, when is that holiday again? Oh, it's quickly, easily searchable in here. Um, and then we have an ideas sheet for all sorts of ideas for the show. We keep them organized into different uh, sections. So it's anything general, topics, uh, gay and lesbian topics, trans topics, non-binary, closeted topics, personal topics about me, history topics, especially this comes in handy for our uh, LGBTQ History Month in October when we're using 31 of these ideas, uh, our activism topics, science topics, interviews we might want to do, uh, life skills class with Becca, all that kind of stuff. All of the ideas are kept there. So whenever you give us an idea in the comments, we add it to that list and we choose from that list of what's going to come up next. As you can tell, we don't know what's going to come up next in the show yet. Uh, sometimes we're a little behind on this. But once a month we sit down and we actually figure out what's going to happen next month on the show. And generally speaking, uh, we're about two, three months ahead because it's Pride Month just getting over now we're a little bit behind but generally speaking we know what's going to happen two months from now we'll start scripting that out and the writers will start working on those scripts right away researching it and getting it all ready for us then generally speaking about a month and a half prior to when you see a video uh, the script is all ready for us ready to go ready to be filmed and we go into production and then about a month prior to when you see a video it is actually uploaded to YouTube, ready to go for all of you. Um, and you might ask why we give so much time there for YouTube uh, to have this video ready. Well, first off, otherwise we fall behind. Uh, right now we're about a week or two out from videos and we're scared about that. Uh, but generally speaking, we like to have a month cushion there. Uh, secondly is because of YouTube's system. Um, sometimes we use some uh, footage from a news clip or something that's completely covered under fair use uh, under copyright law so we're completely fine to use that clip 
but sometimes YouTube's system will flag that clip and say, hey, you shouldn't have used this, and we have to go through a whole dispute system for a couple weeks there to figure that whole process out. But most times, that whole month is given just for YouTube to figure things out on their end and make sure that our video can be monetized the moment it goes out to all of you, and that way, you know, yes, you get ads on the videos, but that also means that we pay for our studio to be a studio and pay for all the footage space and pay for all the expenses in making this show happen. Uh, so uh, really, we, we try to give YouTube a month to figure things out on their own because YouTube isn't the fastest on figuring that, that out. But that is how we organize all of our episodes and keep track of what different team members are working on all the time uh, to try to just make sure that we're not overlapping our work there. Uh, but how do we actually write our scripts? Well, all of that is done in Google Docs online as well. Uh, so uh, this allows us to access all of the scripts for the show at all times. And that way uh, I can read over a script that another writer has done. Uh, that way I can give notes of like, hey, we can change this little section to make it more friendly or we can we need to research this little part a little bit more because it doesn't really make sense to the average viewer. Um, all of those kind of notes can happen back and forth between a writer and myself. I also allow all the writers to read over my scripts before they're recorded because uh, you know, sometimes when you're the writer of an episode, you think you put that in terms that everyone will understand because you've done all the research for this topic, but really the average viewer doesn't know what you researched and hasn't read all the articles you have. So sometimes it's best for different writers to read over my scripts as well, and they'll give me notes back and forth. So all of that happens in Google Docs here, and uh, we kept keep all of the episodes organized right here. Uh, so it's all in one place and then each episode has it's that should be season four um but all of the episodes have their little description of what they're all about the title the episode numbers when it's planned the sponsor of the episode if we have one uh products being featured the costume that i'm supposed to wear during the episode all of that's all up here at the top of the script and then we have our uh, tag that i say right before that little bumper uh, what's going to be in the bumper of the video, what, what you see on screen, and that little beginning graphic, and then the main episode script right here. Uh, so all of this is what I'll end up reading. The bottom of the script will have other episodes you might enjoy that we reference in the episode itself. We'll link all of those right here, and our sources all are listed at the bottom. And that way, when we're creating the description of the video, I can come into the script here, copy and paste this into the description, and there you go. It's all ready to go for all of you beautiful people out there. And since I'm showing you so much of the actual work life that we do every single week here on the show, I wanted to show you a little tiny bit of my personal life as well. Uh, this is my bedroom. This is away from my office, different room completely. That way I get to separate work and uh, personal time. And that helps my mental health way more than you know. So a quick little tour of my bedroom. So this is my bed that I sleep on every night, king size bed with uh, memory foam, really nice to sleep on. Uh, then behind it is my puppy pride flag uh, for the pup tribe. Really awesome that I get to show off my pride there in my bedroom. And then the YouTube gift that they sent me for Christmas uh, last year, which was basically like a 10,000 subscriber mark gift. Uh, so that's awesome, I get to keep it up there in the bedroom. Um, then over here we have a plaque of all the comments, the loving little comments that were left on my coming out uh, Facebook post on June 10th, 2018. Uh, whenever I'm feeling down, I read through these comments right beside my bed. And this is what I look at every single morning when I'm getting out of bed. This is what I look at to cheer myself up and be like, this is why I do the show that I'm doing to help people uh, like I was back when I was a kid. So those comments really, really do help uh, from all the loving people that are around me. And then back here, we have a, a lot of fan art that you guys have sent in to us over the years. Uh, this is fan art of my fursana up here. I forget who they're by, forgive me, uh, but uh, this is my fursana of Amante Deloso, and then Shadow from Shadow's First Christmas book, and then it is, again, my fursana, uh, Be a Brave Puppy. So, like, these really do cheer me up every morning, and I'm like, I look at these and I'm like, be a brave puppy today. Remember, be strong and have a bunch of rainbows. And then up here is a TV where I watch all of the programming for the show. 
so anyway, that's the behind the scenes of how this show is made every single week. Uh, a tour of the studio and a snippet into my life outside of YouTube, uh, into my personal life there a little bit. Um, I, I want to thank all of our team members from the bottom of my heart for all of their hard work making this show possible and their dedication to the excellent quality of the education we provide every single week. Without my team members, this would not be possible at all. Uh, so I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart again. I also want to take a quick second to thank all of our Super Chat donors, our members on the channel here, our uh, customers of the merchandise on, on the PBR store, all of our uh, people who watch the ads before all the videos, because really without you doing that, we wouldn't be able to afford the equipment that we have now. And yes, even rainbows are going on in the background on our, on our screensaver. Um, but without the equipment that we have, there's no doubt in my mind, we wouldn't be able to provide the show that we do. Yes, you could make uh, a TV show on your cell phone. That's entirely possible. But for the quality that we're looking for every week and for the amount of episodes we're trying to do a year with 150 episodes a year uh, to this quality, which just not be possible with without this equipment. And so I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart sincerely for allowing us to have all this equipment to, uh, it's not just toys that we're playing with, it's legitimate, like, pieces of equipment that we need to make this show. Um, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. You have no idea how much that means. I also want to quickly shout out all the people in the comments who comment friendly things and, uh, worlds of support for us, because without your comments, I, I don't know if this show would be possible either. I mean, you have no idea how much your comments really mean to me sometimes, uh, because, I'll wake up from a really bad night of feeling lonely or whatever I feel, and your comments will help greatly. Um, the team members and I all have to moderate hateful comments every single day to make sure this is an LGBTQ-friendly space for all of you. And so uh, a lot of times we feel down after we read the comments and after we moderate for a little while. And it, it, it's a really difficult job. So uh, a lot of times your comments of support greatly help our mental health way more than I think you know sometimes. And so um, this isn't just about people who support us financially, but this is about emotionally as well. And so I sincerely thank you from the bottom of my heart. You have no idea how much your comments mean to me. Um, uh, w without this show, uh, I, I would be a whole lot more depressed because I wouldn't be able to help so many people. And at the same time of providing this education, you all provide education to me. You all uh, teach me way more than you know that you do, and you all provide so much emotional support for me as well. So this isn't just a one-way street where we're giving. Uh, you guys are giving so much support as well. So thank you so much for that. Um, and uh, stay tuned for new episodes of the show every week now. Uh, we we took a little break here with this kind of episode, but we'll be back very, very shortly with brand new episodes for you all to enjoy the regular educational episodes. So with all that said, thank you so much for watching this entire thing, seeing a little snippet into my personal life and also what I enjoy most about making a TV show every day of my life uh, is working with the gear and helping a whole bunch of people behind the scenes. Uh, so I, I sincerely thank you for watching. As always, don't forget to like this video, comment down below your LGBTQ friendly thoughts, hit that rainbow subscribe button so you don't miss out on new episodes of the show, and share this video with others. As always, I'm your host, Professor Pride, aka Amante Deloso. Have a gay day, everyone, and rough for now.